This program is brought to you by the following Patreon contributors. Become a contributor at patreon.com forward slash databits and by viewers like you. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Databits channel about a rare, bizarre format that maybe you've seen before, maybe you haven't. But on my last video that I made, I featured a Tensor answering machine, which is an old school voicemail machine. And it used 8-track tapes as well as cassette tapes. Well, this particular machine, I found it on eBay and I thought, you know, that little slot there looks really familiar. I wonder if it's play tape that is the format that this one uses. I had already done a video regarding the Dictaphone Ansaphone answering machine, a very funky looking orange machine, which used this particular tape as well as cassette. So why not have another company do the same thing, right? Well, the intriguing part is that play tapes are actually music tapes. So these particular tapes go for quite a bit of money on eBay, I had to buy a couple of them just to do the testing here on this machine. But I wondered if this answering machine played play tapes. And once I saw the outgoing cassette cartridge, which you see here, a 20 second outgoing announcement tape, I was pretty sure this would also play music tapes from the 60s. So I was very excited to get this machine, but once I did put one of these music tapes in it, I discovered that it only played one set of the tracks. You see, a play tape has four songs on it, or two tracks of music, sometimes more than four songs, but in this case, four. And in order for that to happen, there has to be a stereo head inside. So what they did with the play tape is they divided this tape in two parts, top and bottom, to record two sets of information. So I was excited about it. I found out it worked, but then realized it would only play one of the two tracks. So guess what that means? It means it's time to modify this machine and make it do what I wanted it to do. How did I modify it? I'll show you that here shortly. But in order to modify it, I had to borrow some parts from an actual play tape machine. This one was missing some parts and the best place to find them was in this MGM play tape machine. Now you may be wondering why there's a cassette player sitting on top. Well, the original function of this answering machine was you would record your greeting on a cartridge like this. Perhaps a 20 second greeting would go on this cartridge. The call would come in, the greeting would be played from this little tape here. And then once the tape had played all the way through, it would switch over with via a relay and turn on this cassette deck, which was wired to a jack in the back of the answering machine, feeding it a signal. So you would just kind of put this in record mode like that. And then it would record the incoming message from your caller. So kind of a clever system. I would imagine it made this unit cheaper and that it only had one tape deck inside of it, whereas the last one we reviewed had two tape decks, two independent tape decks, as a matter of fact. So what I wanted to do was modify it, make it work, make it play both tracks of my music tapes. And it does a pretty good job of it, especially since I stole the audio head out of the MGM. But you'll notice this little red knob here on the top. This is my switch. This is uh, channel one, channel two, and then both channels simultaneously. This little knob came off of a uh, 2XL eight track tape playing robot, which I have a very brief video about on my channel. Maybe I'll do a more extensive one later, but that switch actually came from this MGM device right here. I've taped this knob on here just for appearance sake. Uh, I've got my microphone here, which hooks right into the front. And that is what I'm using to record my greeting. Over here, I have some controls. I have a hear announcement section here of the switch. And then I have a reset switch. So reset 
will play back my greeting and then once it sees the foil on the tape senses the electrical foil well it's not really electrical it's aluminum foil creates a circuit and then stops right here next to record announcement is this lever and you actually pull this lever out to record your announcement it's kind of a bummer because there's a chance that if you leave this out and then say put one of your music play tapes in it there's a good chance you're going to erase it or record over it and that did happen to me in the troubleshooting process we've got two indicator lights here in the front we have in use and ready so as long as it's doing something the light comes on so we have uh, playback calls which is here and that sends the electrical signal to the cassette deck sitting on top to turn on and allows you to play back your recorded messages on just turns on the play tape deck and allows it to function and with the hood removed we're looking at the back of the unit and we've got this really groovy speaker uh, grill going on right there right here is our electrical cord which goes into the mains or a power plug of my wall and this is the input from my phone line and uh, it doesn't look like a typical phone line but uh, just like my eight track uh, answering machine it just has these two probes and i assume that there was an adapter or a type of jack that this would plug into uh, not like, you know, do like testing probes, you know, kind of like that. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll put up on the screen here real quick what that jack probably looked like. So first, let's take a look at the power section of this answering machine. It does kind of look like somebody's uh, home electronics project. Uh, but in any case, uh, we got some relays in here. As I mentioned earlier, there's a relay here. There's one here and there's one here. We have a transformer here, power transformer. We have uh, our speaker here, which I actually replaced with one that's just a little bit larger than the one that was originally in it and uh, let's see down underneath here you can see it right below my finger there this is your audio amplifier board right here you can see two transistors like outboard transistors hanging out the side there these little green things here with colored leads a couple of giant capacitors there's one here one here and one there electrolytic capacitors there and i didn't have to replace those so i don't have an analog phone line in my house so I don't have the ability to actually test this machine and make sure that it can accept phone calls. So we'll have to omit that part of our testing here. Uh, the best part of this project was modding this to be able to play music tapes and it does it quite well. Uh, the other two things that again that I had to do to mod was uh, putting the switch on that you see here. So this particular switch was uh, taken from that MGM device. These two cables that you see here go to this audio head. So this is the pickup head for the tape. It reads the information off the tape and translates it into sound. This is your erase head right here. This is the cartridge slot that your cartridge goes into. And what was missing in this machine was these two ball bearings that come out and go into a slot on the side of the cartridge you can see it there and once it pops into those slots it holds the cartridge into place and without that your cartridge has a tendency to kind of drift off the playback head and you, their sound just kind of disappears or is just not very loud we have a, uh, a capstan right here that's actually driving the tape across the head and inside the cartridge itself is a pinch roller. You can see it right there at the bottom right of the cartridge. Pretty cool. So what I needed to do was have two tracks, two different audio sources coming from this head. It originally only had one of these wires. So these both are new. Uh, ones that I have added and they go to this switch and then out from this switch is the audio source which goes into the audio amplifier that we saw earlier. 
If you've ever taken apart a play tape player before, you may notice that this chassis probably matches a particular model of player out there. They probably just bought these particular plastic chassis and then just modified them and put them in these machines. Uh, the other thing they modified, which was uh, the volume control, and you can see the volume control happens to be right here. This is the only volume control, so if you happen to need it louder, too bad because you'd have to take the screws off to get into the volume control. Very, very bizarre and uh, very impractical as well. I'm not sure why they didn't mount that on the outside of the unit. So let's go ahead and put in a tape and I'll let you hear what it records like. It's not really that great in its recording quality and you'll hear that I made a couple of attempts to record on this machine and just doesn't sound that great. So let's take a listen here. I hope you and your friends will leave me a recording because that recording will help me understand why you called me and why you are bothering me, which is terrible. Thank you and goodbye. Excited about your life. Goodbye. So the foil that's supposed to be on the tape came off and I did not replace it. So Normally at that point in time, where once the greeting was completed, this tape would stop on its own. But in this case, it won't do that because there is no foil sensing thing on there. So here's my Ansiphone tape, my Dictaphone tape, and uh, play a little bit of that. When I went to eBay to find a tape cartridge, one of those play tape tapes, I saw that they were $10 and up, and I was like, Okay, I'm not paying ten dollars for a play tape. I mean, I got rid of my play tape system simply because the quality was so awful. I was not impressed at all. So those are some of my recordings and test recordings. Uh, I used that last recording you just heard in my previous video, so it's still there. Haven't erased it. All right, how about some music? Let's uh, let's take a listen to some uh, music here. I've got the Ray Charles Singers, and uh, I think you'll be surprised at how well this sounds. Now. One of the reasons that I wasn't impressed with the sound quality of play tape was because the capacitors uh, in these machines typically need to be replaced. And if you don't, you're going to get some really fuzzy, not clear sound. So by uh, replacing those caps, you're going to get uh, much better audio. But this one didn't need caps replaced. The audio is pretty good. And I'm going to keep the playback uh, length short because I don't want the copyright police to arrest me. So let's play a couple of six second segments of uh, track one and track two here. So here we go. Uh, let's start with track two, just for fun. Okay, so there's the Ray Charles Singers. I got some Connie Francis. I'm sure this is all in your tape library as well. These are really terrific titles here. So that's pretty cool. So I can sit and play my play tapes for hours on end, if only they were cheap enough to buy a whole bunch of them. Uh, this one, the label's coming off a little bit, so I'm gonna carefully put it in there. Probably gonna tear the label up some more. This is Jimmy Dean here. Yes, this, I guess it's the same guy that made sausage. Okay, how about both tracks simultaneously? From what I understand, uh, play tape 
was going to have a stereo version. Uh, there was some kind of a, a Japanese version of play tape, which was high fidelity uh, that was used in automobiles. I see those listed every once in a while on uh, eBay and they're like crazy high expensive, I guess because of their rarity. But uh, in any case, they intended to be stereo, but they never got there. From what I know, I have not seen a stereo play tape. It's always just two mono tracks of sound. So uh, I'm going to show you a slide deck of some pictures and a little bit of video that I took as I was restoring this unit. And let's do that for you now. Okay, so here's the uh, original head here on the right that was in the answering machine, and then the one I replaced it with, the two-channel head there on the left. Here is that original head still in the machine, unmodified, and you can see the power wires coming off the top there. Here is a picture of the clip, the pieces that are involved in uh, replacement of the ball bearing slots there. Here's the play tape machine slot, as you can see there, all set up and perfectly working. And this demonstrates here how the tape goes in and meets that ball bearing and locks into place. Here is our answering machine slot that was missing that particular piece. And those three pieces were then inserted into my answering machine. So just a little bit bigger view of that original bay there for the tape. And then here's what the two sets of pieces look like. They didn't glue together. They just inserted together into those slots. And once we uh, got everything set up, we were able to get our tape to lock into place. Here's what one of those slots looked like. It's on the bottom side of the chassis. So there's one here on the left, and then there's gonna be another one here on the right, right next to the flywheel there at the bottom of your screen. So once uh, everything is in there, then you'll see a nice relationship between the tape and the ball bearing going into the slot there on the tape. And here's a little video I made of it after I got those two uh, sides fixed. And then we'll just spend a couple minutes here looking at uh, the machine in motion there. You can see the flywheel and motor. There's our switch that switches the two tracks and then the cable that comes from there down into our audio board. And there's that bar that's actually doing the record switch action there. And it's connected to a solenoid there. I'm not sure what its function is at this point, but uh, there's our speaker again. And that's the tour of the inside. So uh, guys, that'll pretty much wrap up this video. Uh, if you liked it, please click the like button, subscribe and click the bell if you'd like notifications and leave a comment below. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.